going on, church? How y'all feeling? Good. Can we give it up for those online, near and far, wherever they are? Thank you for, for joining us. Um, it's, it's crazy that the event that shook the world on 9-11 took place 21 years ago, right? Man, most of you probably remember exactly where you were and what you were doing. I remember I was um, taking a group of at-risk youth uh, from New Jersey to the New England area. So we had to drive through New York. And I remember that morning we woke up, you know, we got breakfast, we got in the van, we got after it early. As soon as we get in the van, you know, I had to turn on the radio because if you are driving youth back then, you definitely had some music playing. And uh, they didn't have the playlist, they didn't have the phones. Anyways, we, we, we had to turn on the radio. And at every station we tried, no music. It was just news. And I'm like, okay, let me flip, flip. And the kids were getting a little restless, like, come on, Clay, put on some music right now. And I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying, there's nothing. And then eventually, I actually started listening to what the news was reporting. They reported a commercial plane flying in a no-fly zone. We thought it was a joke. It was no joke. Eventually, the entire van went silent intently listening to what was happening. As we, as we passed the city, we were on the interstate. We can see smoke from now both of the towers, and it, it was real, y'all. Emergency vehicles with sirens out of the woodwork just was going up and down the interstate. It was total pandemonium. One thing was clear. No matter the tough guy image these kids uh, were used to carrying, everyone was scared. Everyone was shook. I remember trying to do my best to comfort the kids while I handled the big, the big Rand McNally Atlas, trying to find a safe place for us to stop and make a call. Remember those atlases back in the day? I mean, they talk about distracted driving today. <laughs> Out of here. But, it, but it, finally, it finally dawned on me. I needed to get out and to call the families. Why? Because this was an attack on our country, on our soil. In America, we weren't used to that. So I made the calls, and we decided that since we were north of the city at this point, we would just keep going to our destination so we can get out and process just what in the world was going on. If you're old enough, chances are, again, you remember exactly what you were doing, where you were, 9-11-2. Why? Because this was a cataclysmic shockwave of an event. This was a shaking that was felt throughout the world. It didn't matter where you were. And when we go through a major shaking like that, we better be rooted in something real. When we go through a major shaking like that, we better be rooted in something that can sustain us. Allow me to pivot real quick. In a world where it's so common to look so good as a Christian on the outside, we can serve, serve, serve in every ministry. We can come to the churches and the church event. We can go and do all these things. We can be all about these things and make it seem like we are a good Christian. But when the shaking comes like a 9-11 or when the shaking comes like the more recent COVID, when the shaking comes like the Capital Six riots, I can keep it going, the political unrest that we see, the gun debate drama that we've endured, or if the Bengals don't beat the Steelers today, <laughs> shoot, some of y'all probably might not see for a week. No, I'm playing. But, but when the shaking comes, how does it provoke well-meaning Christians that seem to have a, a deep-rooted relationship with Jesus just leave the church? Or worse, stop following him altogether. How does that happen? May I propose to you that this is usually due to a shallow and a shallow history and relationship with Jesus which is largely due to a weak root system. Jesus warns us about a weak root system in Mark 4 when he shares in the parable of the sower. He says this, 
Other seed, the gospel message, that's what we're talking about. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up. It was looking good since it had no depth to soil. It still sprang up. When the sun rose and it was scorched, when the shaking came, when that thing came to knock it up, out off its feet, when, when the whatever issue came, it was scorched. And since it had no root, no depth in their relationship with Jesus, it withered away. I believe, and it's sad for me to say this, but I believe that there are far too many Christians withering away when the shaking comes. I've seen it. We've seen it. When the shaking comes, we've seen too many people wither away, which is oftentimes due to a weak root system. That's why it's an honor. It's an honor that we are launching into this brand new sermon series entitled Rooted, where we're focusing on how we can go deep, be rooted deep, coal miner deep in him. And in a world where it's so common to be consumed with looking good, looking like the part of a Christian, that won't cut it when the shaking comes. And y'all know this. That won't cut it when the earthquake comes, when the disasters come. That won't cut it. It's, it cannot be enough to look like a good Christian. We must be rooted deep in him. The writer of Hebrews says it this way in Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so, worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. There it is right there. We need, we don't just want, it ain't just a pretty cool idea. We need to be rooted in this kind of kingdom, one that's unshakable. Why? Because when the roots go deep, our tree grows strong. Cuando las raíces son profundas, nuestro árbol crece fuerte. Mm. I study long for that one, y'all. <laughs> for real. Got you. I got you. A weak root system in Christ will ex be exposed, though, time and time again. But with the deep root system, no matter the weather, no matter the storm, no matter the thing, we stand. So I'm excited, y'all. Let's go. Let's journey. Let's go into this thing together. For the first three weeks, we're going to talk about three gifts. We're going to talk about faith, hope, and, and love. The, these three gifts help nourish our root system. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then the, the following three weeks, we're going to talk about now that we understand how to stay rooted, how, do, how does this rooted life play out? How does this rooted life play out practically? How does it look? So if you're ready, look to your neighbor and say, ready? Because let's go. In Jesus' name, let's make it happen. All right. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. I just, since you want to have fun, but also since you want to bring challenge, I sense you want to bring comfort, but I also sense that you want to bring conviction. And so, Lord, we want it all. I know I'm the one giving this talk, but, Father, will you flow through me in such a way that you open hearts, minds, awareness, Lord, for you in Jesus' name, for your glory. And the church said amen. Amen. Here's what I want to do, something different. I want to read scripture over you, yeah, but I want to do it a little differently. In a minute, I'm about to ask you guys all to stand up. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 13 over us, okay? Now, if you know, 1 Corinthians 13 is probably the most overplayed scripture in marriages and weddings, okay? Um, so you're, you heard it a lot. I'm sure you're familiar with it, but please don't let the familiarity of this passage Rob what God has for you, okay? So here's what we're going to do. All stand up, everybody. If you are able, online, at home, if you are able, go ahead and stand up. And receive this. Allow this to penetrate deep in your hearts. Don't listen to me necessarily. Listen to the words. The words 
that I'm speaking, okay? Let's go ahead and receive. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have a, the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away the childhood. I put away the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. You may be seated. I'm sure some of y'all caught something different, something unique, something specific that the Lord wanted you to catch. A portion of this may have been convicting. A portion of this may have been a little more weighty. May have been more comforting. But notice the last line. 13, 13. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Paul is sharing gifts that will help our root system go deep in an unshakable kingdom. He's sharing it right here. These are, the, these are the things I believe he wants us to glean. Why? Because when roots go deep, our tree grows strong. Cuando las raíces son profundas, nuestro árbol crece fuerte. Listen, church. Being weak-rooted Christians is not where we are. It's not who we are. It's not what we should strive to be. Isaiah 61.3 declares that we are oaks of righteousness. Oaks of righteousness. Think about it. Oak trees. What do oak trees, what are they known for? They're known for longevity. They've been around for thousands of years. How? Why? Because of their deep, vast root system. Their root system spans like three times, in some cases, higher than the canopy of many of the oak trees. They get deep roots. And Isaiah is prophesying. He's saying, hey, hey, the people of God, you are oaks of righteousness, meaning that we are called to have root systems so deep that when the storm comes, we don't waver. When the storm comes, we don't waver. We are dead set on being a representative, an ambassador in believing what Christ did, what he's doing, and what he will do. And one of the gifts that will help us ensure that we stay rooted in him, deeply rooted in him, is faith. So what's faith? Let's talk about faith. To understand it, we got we to gotta know what Scripture says and how it defines it. In Hebrews 11.1 1 is the way, is, is, is where, where we always usually go. 
um, to define faith. So let's go there. I love how the NASB defines it, the 2020 version. It, it reads this. Now, faith is the certainty. Someone say certainty. Faith is the certainty of things hoped for or expected, right? Looking ahead. I am certain by, of what is coming ahead. It's what, what, I, what, I'm, what I see in the future about to happen. So faith is the certainty of things hoped for and a proof of things. Someone say proof. Proof of things, conviction of things, a knowing that I know that I know of things not seen. And all this centers on Jesus, Jesus, right? Now, all this centers on Jesus. In the Old Covenant, if you were, if you were around the Old Covenant, the, the faith looked a little different. Sure, you had memory stones, but your faith that was credited to you as righteousness, you looked ahead to the promise. There was a looking ahead. I believe that there's a promised Messiah. I'm going to stake my flag in the ground that there's a promised Messiah. So they had to look ahead, right? But in the new covenant, there's a 360 faith. What do I mean by that? I mean that there is a faith in who he was. What did he do? He did the finished work on the cross. He rose from the grave. He made a way for you and me to be free. That's what I believe in right there. So I believe in what he did, what he is doing right now. What's he doing? He's Emmanuel, God with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is always with us in the storm, and I also have faith in what he is about to do. What's he going to do? He's returning for his bride. He is coming back home on a white horse, king of kings, lord of lords, tatted on his thigh, and he's about to make all things right, and we're going to be forever in, in perpetuity chilling with him, right? So there's a 360 faith that we have today. Okay, Clay, so what's the difference between faith and hope? Well, I'm going to go ahead and let Beth take that one. She's going to throw all those Hebrew words at you and all that, you know what I mean? <laughs> now I'm playing around. Playing. Let's talk a little bit about faith and hope. They're too, they're, they are too similar, but yet different. Faith is all-encompassing. A 360, I have faith in what he's, he did, faith in what he is doing, faith in what he will do. But hope, biblical hope, is faith, this biblical faith, but in the future tense. Hope is a future confidence. Example, have you ever been like in this meh or meh mood, and then all of a sudden you think about what is to come later? Oh, man, I got a date with baby girl tonight. Snap, yes, put me in a good mood. Alexander Hamels. Okay, okay. I just saw Hamilton. I'm sorry. So, so I, so or, or like when someone like you're, you're in a meh mood and you, you got something you're looking forward to. You got a toy that you want to go home and play with. You got a game you just bought. You, you, you know you're going on a date with your spouse or whatever. And you just get excited. You just get giddy and it puts you in a better mood, right? Like, yo, let's go. That's hope. That's hope. And, and here's the deal. We should be the most hope-filled people because we got the king coming. He's coming. Whether in our lifetime or not, he's coming. So, therefore, there's hope, all right? But faith encompasses hope. So faith encompasses hope. All right, we're going to keep it moving. Let's talk more on faith. For more on hope, come back next week as, as Beth kills it. She's going to break down that gift even more. Another way fa uh, faith is described in Scripture is, uh, is in Ephesians 6. If you have your Bibles, turn there, or you can follow with me on the screen. Ephesians 6, 16, um, Paul breaks down the full armor of God. And do y'all remember what Paul likened faith to? Let's read. In all circumstances, take up the Take up the 
shield of faith with which you can extinguish three. Oh, my bad. Am I? In which you can extinguish some, all the flaming darts of the evil one. Now, most of us have heard this, you know, a lot. We know Paul's used the metaphorical imagery to describe faith and the other, all the other things he describes as armor. In this case, the shield. And he's likening, and he's likening it, faith, to the shield that can extinguish all the flaming darts of the enemy or the evil one. Let's talk about those flaming darts a little bit, though. Because I believe that there are some people here who have been hit with one too many of those flaming darts. You see, those flaming darts aren't just circumstances, aren't just persecution, isn't, isn't just uh, negative things that have happened in and around our lives, right? They're also thoughts and feelings sent to slowly kill your faith in God. They're also thoughts and feelings to get you to stop believing that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. To get you to stop believing that you're his masterpiece. Thoughts, flaming dark thoughts like, no one really appreciates what I contribute. What am I doing? I'm, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't, I don't feel qualified. I feel underutilized and overlooked. Or thoughts like, ah, I'm just a loser. I'm losing at life. I'm just losing. Or flaming darts like, mm, I don't feel like I'm a good Christian, so it must be true. That's my truth. I'm not a good Christian. I'm just I'm not, I'm not, I'm not who I'm supposed to be in Christ. Or, or thoughts like, I feel like I'm not worthy of the love of God. That's my truth. So if, if it's the way I feel, it must be true. Flaming darts to get us to focus more on our pain and less on his reign. Flaming darts to, to get us to focus more on self and less on him. These flaming darts, y'all, are sent to slowly kill your faith in God and who he made you to be. That's why we should be picking up our shield of faith. Because we need to believe in what he believes about us. We need to be shielded by those flaming darts. Why? Because we need to believe what he believes about us. We don't need to surround ourselves with the naysaying. We don't need to surround ourselves with all the darts and all the flaming arrows pointed at us. Why? Because we want to, oh, wait, 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 wait. All those flaming darts, all the, he, I'm a masterpiece to God. Thank you very much. I'm good. That's what he's saying. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm the apple of God's eye. I'm good. I'm the apple of God's eye. Okay, I can walk like a boss with my head up. That's right. I can walk like a boss because I'm what? More than a conqueror. Thank you very much. Let's go. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the apple of his eye. I'm a masterpiece to God. Whoa, okay. But when we put the shield down and we think we could just do it on our own, you know, we can entertain these thoughts. You know what? I can take these thoughts. I can take these thoughts. That's good. That's good. And the more we focus on us and our problem, the more we start to see our faith wane. And, and guess what? As our faith wanes, our roots are drying up. And these negative thoughts come back. Man, I'm never going to amount to nothing. Man, my situation's hopeless. Man, the circumstance I'm in, where is God in my pain? I don't feel like God is with me. So therefore, he must not be. I don't feel like I'm a good Christian anymore. These are flaming darts that will eventually disease our root system. We can magnify these darts. We can magnify our pain. We can magnify all this and see our faith wane 
or we can pick up our shield of faith and remember who Jesus was, what he's doing now, and what he will do. And what did Jesus do? The finished work. He died on the cross and he rose again so that he can, be, he can make us, you and me, free. And I will rest on that truth. Okay, thank you very much. That's right. That's what you did. And then what, did he, what is he doing today? He is helping us walk like a conqueror. He is giving us, he's commissioning us power and authority to be more than a conqueror. And then what is he going to do? He's going to return for a bride full of glory. Oh, boy, that's what the shield of faith reminds me of. Okay, let me just go ahead and refuge in the faith then. I want a refuge in my faith, and I'm on a refuge in who he says that I am. Who does he say I am? He says, I'm a masterpiece. Okay, that's right. I'm a son. I'm a child of God. Okay, that's right. I'm a daughter of the Most High King. That's right. And guess what? My roots are getting deeper and deeper in that truth. That's the truth washes over us. I can stand. And the truth that washes over us allows our roots to go deep. Church, we don't need, I mean, I can walk around with a shield all day, start talking to people, but we don't need the shield. It's not about the shield. It's about the faith as a shield. Does that make sense? Our faith is our shield. When we start losing faith in him, that's when the flaming arrows come and have more of an impact on our root system. But then when we believe, hey, God, you are unstoppable. You are remarkable. I bless what you did. I bless what you are doing. And I bless what you are going to do. You have reigned as king before. You are king now. And you are king forevermore. Forevermore. I remember years back when I was doing ministry, uh, I was getting distracted with some flaming darts of comparison. Um, man, I was getting distracted with flaming darts of uh, comparison and competition. And I was, I was being consumed with what God was, was not doing with my ministry and what he was doing in these other ministries. I'm like, man, God, why are you, why are you doing that for them? And you, you've got things going on there and there and there, but what about me? I started feeling certain ways, and I'm starting to lose faith, and I'm starting to lose trust, and I'm starting to grab at things I don't need to grab at. I'm starting to make a way in ways that I just didn't need to make a way, and I, and I felt the Lord gently rebuke me in that season. I felt like he said, Clay, you, you focus on your depth in me, and allow me to focus on my breadth through you. I was, in the, I was in that moment, like, wow, God, you're, you're right. It hit me deep. That's, whew. It's like, that's right, Lord. I need to just focus, not on the left, not on the right. I just need to just focus growing deep roots in you. And I had, I had to pick up my shield. And, 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 you know, and, and as I picked up my shield of faith, I had to recall all the good things that God continues to do in my life. Like, like you know what, God, you, you, are, you are good all the time. And all the time, you are good in my life. You have a plan. You have a promise for me in my life. And I had to, to get on my, my faith grind. And as I continue to believe these things, as I continue to just focus on the truth of who God was and continue to, to grow deeper roots, just more things started happening in my life, in my ministry, and things that, because I was focused. And when the storm came, when things came that was trying to knock me off my feet, you know what? I was able to stand as an oak of righteousness rather than being worried about all kinds of other things and what's happening, what's not happening, what are they saying, what are they not saying. Nah, 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 nah. Church, I had a refuge. I had a refuge in that faith. And no matter, no matter what happens, no matter the storm, no matter the, 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 the thing that happens, I had to... to, to Remember who Jesus 
was, who he is, and who he will forever be, and what he continues to say about me. That's what provokes me, y'all. That's what come enables me, empowers me to stand. And that's what enables me to keep drawing a deep root system in him. I want to be firmly girded in him. There's no other place I'd rather be than in him. And I feel that that's a word for some people here today. You may be experiencing a shaking. You may be experiencing a, a, a circumstance, a thing that's designed to knock you off your feet. A flaming arrow has been shot. Many flaming arrows has been shot and has been trying to knock you off your feet. May I encourage you to take up your shield of faith. It may be a medical diagnosis. It may be a health crisis. It may be that you're going through a divorce right now or you just came fresh off a divorce. Mental health, I don't know. Whatever that storm is, there's a flaming arrow with your name on it that only can be extinguished with the faith of God, the gift of faith that God has given you. And by faith, we can stand this oaks of righteousness because when our roots, church, when our roots go deep, our tree grow strong. So here's my action step for you. We're about to we're about to start a rooted small group experience and we want you all to be a part of it. What is that all about? Well, we believe that in order to be rooted, we must be in in good fellowship, in purposeful fellowship. And we need to grow in the context of community. That's how we grow. We grow deep roots in context of community. And so there are going to be groups. There are going to be Spanish-speaking groups. There are going to be groups, uh, affinity groups of all sorts, you know, going on. So this is going to be, we pray, a church-wide journey. So text rooted, if you want to get down in this thing, text rooted to 513-612-9910. 513-612-9910 to find out how you can get more involved in this small group experience. Or you can just go to the Welcome Center out there in the atrium after the service. But journey with us. And, and here's the deal. Resist the temptation to scoff this idea that this small group thing is not your thing. You know, I, I just pray that we can resist that temptation and that urge to say, ah, I'm good. Listen, we need to grow deep roots. So if, you, if this is not your thing, then what can you do in your week to ensure your roots go deep? Think about that. What is it that you are going to commit to this week or in the weeks ongoing to ensure our roots go deep? Otherwise, prayerfully consider this and let's go. Let's journey together as we continue to grow rooted as a people of God because that's our lot. That's who we are. We are oaks of righteousness. Let's pray. Okay. Your, your power, your presence, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We pray that, Father, no matter what the storm is, no matter what the thing we're dealing with today, Lord God, that we be so rooted that we don't waver. And as a result of not wavering, we are a beacon of hope for a community, Lord God, for your glory. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen. Okay, are y'all ready to worship? We're going to go ahead and worship. Let's all stand, and I'll be back up here to do ministry. sing this together. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud, so I'll never be more loved than 
anything going on that relates even remotely to that it's your invitation to get prayer I know some of us are trying to race home for the game I get it but I feel like that we don't want to try to accelerate what God is wanting to do so if you need prayer come receive prayer uh, there are two things one thing increased measure of faith word. I really feel that strong. I feel like there are some people here who want to grow from faith for faith because they know the righteous walk by faith and this is their birthright. If that's you, come get prayer. Second, salvation. I believe that there's somebody here, three people at least here right now who don't have a relationship with the Lord and you want one. You want to lean into that thing. If that's you, don't leave here the same way you came in. I pray that God, uh, that you receive prayer. It'll be the best thing you can do for your life. All right? So let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. We bless your holy name. You are more than we can imagine. Jaira, you are enough. It's you and only you who are enough. Father, help us to have the faith in that. So to remind ourselves that truth when the going gets tough, when the storms come, the shakings come, Father, to regurgitate that truth in such a way our roots grow deeper. There's power in that testimony, Lord, that you are enough. You are good. You are kind. You are loving. All these things. In Jesus' name. And Father, bless the Bengals too. <laughs> While we at it. <laughs> Who day? So God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your week. If you need prayer, come on down to get prayer. Otherwise, I'll see you when I see you. God bless you.